Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Community as we celebrate God's mercy and love on this fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Greetings to our home viewers as well. Out of reverence for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, please take a moment to turn off all cell phones, pagers, games, and other electronic devices. Thank you. The words to our hymns will be up on the video screens. We have a few announcements that I would like to bring to your attention. As a reminder, please follow the protocol of using face coverings during Mass. Remember that it is allowed to take away only after you receive the communion and take a step to the side to consume. To exit, follow the direction of hospitality ministers. Thanks for your kindness. We will celebrate the presentation of the Lord on Tuesday, February 2nd, with Mass at 8.30 a.m. in English and 7 p.m. in Spanish. Blessing of candles will be at the beginning of Mass. Today begins Catholic Schools Week and will end on February, February 6th. We're grateful for all of our wonderful teachers and students who contribute so much to the life of our parish. Due to the pandemic, the open house will be virtual this year. For more information, check out the flyers in the narthex and visit the school's website at www.smmcs.org. The annual Steps for Students 5K run slash walk to support Catholic schools in our archdiocese will be virtual this year. St. Mary Magdalene Catholic School will hold this event on Saturday, February 20th, 2021. Remember, your support and donation for this event will assist us to continue to carry out our parish mission through Catholic education. You can register online to participate and support Father Felix's race team. For more information, please check the parish bulletin. Please join us in singing our entrance hymn, 742, The Church's One Foundation, 742 in the Gather Hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning to you all. Good morning. We thank God for bringing us together this morning to celebrate this fourth Sunday in ordinary time and to thank him for the gift of the life he has given us, the faith he has endowed us with, and also praying for blessings upon each and every one of us. We pray for all our parishioners, for those who are sick, for healing for them, 
And for those listed in our bulletin for intentions today, we ask the mercy of God to guide them. Today, the, we begin Catholic school week, and so we pray for all our students here at St. Mary Magdalene Catholic School, our staff and our teachers and the parents and family members and all those who support Catholic education. And we pray in a special way for the grace of God to guide all our youth all over the world, that um, God will touch their hearts to be able to be focused on him. My sisters and brothers, to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give life to your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal happiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth peace on earth peace to people of goodwill Amen Let us pray Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in true, in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, a prophet, a prophet like me will the Lord, your God, raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb. On the day of the assembly, when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tempted me. They did. 
tested me though they had seen my works if to A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel of the Lord.
God is good, and all the time. As I was uh, preparing for this weekend, I read into the text of the scriptures. I was really um, caught by the second reading of today, particularly the first uh, line that reads, I should like you to be free of anxieties. St. Paul went on to talk about anxiety regarding the things of this world and how that will sometimes keep us away from serving God. He kind of differentiates between maybe someone who is married and someone who is not, and how that person who is not married maybe is concentrating rather on the things of the Lord, um, and the one who is married is thinking of their spouse and the family. But we all know that all of us are anxious, either married or not. I'm not married, but I'm anxious. Anxious about my family, my parents, my siblings, their children, and everything like that. My mom, who who took care of us as uh, children, is now worried about, not just about the children themselves, but about her grandchildren worried about how they are living and what is happening to them, how they go to school and how they succeed in, how they will succeed in life. Worried about the the, uh, the, the virus that is uh, ravaging the world, the pandemic that is out here right now, and how it becomes much more difficult for people to integrate and to interact. Worried about what will happen tomorrow about her health, about uh, the children, and everything around that. So every one of us is anxious. Of course, she's anxious about uh, her husband, my dad, and my dad is anxious about his wife, my mother, and everything like that. So every day there is something to think about, some, some things to worry about. And sometimes these worries, of course, when we take it too far, and without looking at the one who can take care of those worries for us, we run into greater difficulty. Our sickness becomes even more because we worry so much that um, our health is becoming impacted. All of us are reading the news or hearing in the news things about even our schools, you know, the fact that with, um, with 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 the pandemic and everyone just being at home most of the time, uh, the, there's a rise in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in suicide, even among, among children, you know. Uh, the other day I read about a nine-year-old who took his, uh, his own life, you know, um, just because things are just not working the way they thought it should work. And the, the rise in, uh, in suicide among uh, uh, school children because of uh, due to the pandemic, seeing their parents struggling and trying to to live life and trying to provide for them, and seeing their grandchildren, uh, grandparents, or things like that in pain and in suffering. But when we worry and we are anxious and we do not uh, meet the one or or open our eyes to the one who can really resolve those those moments for us then we run into taking the loss into our own hands and we run into doing things ourselves, things that will not really help us, but we made the situation even worse. So when we are anxious, we should um, take those anxieties and fears and worries to the one who can solve them for us or who can give us the strength to endure them, who can give us the patience to be able to overcome them so that those kind of things that becomes a a distraction can also be a source of prayer, a means of us praying and asking God for help. Because only God can make things better for us. Only God can resolve our inner yearnings, things within us that need to be taken care of. Of course, people around us can assist in some way, but... um, it is through the grace of God that we can really um, take into mind, into our hearts, 
those uh, graces that we need to help us in life. And so when St. Paul says, I should like you to be free of anxieties, that is also my wish for each and every one of us because um, there is so much uh, around us that uh, puts pressure on us that make us to want to break even when we, don't, uh, when we feel we don't have the strength to continue to live on. But the, the, the Christian life is about hope. The Christian life is about joy in the Lord, joy that doesn't come from external things and things around us that, can, that we feel will make us happy, but rather joys that come from within us that help us to recognize the beauty of the life that God has given us already and to enhance that life through constant devotion and, uh, and, uh, and, and faith in God, through constant love and desire to live out the faith that God has given us. And when things become a little difficult and we don't know where to turn to or who to turn to, then it's time for us to, re to turn to God. When we think we cannot do anything anymore, then let us ask God for strength. Or if I, let us not wait till we think we cannot do anything anymore. Let us begin to, to ask him for strength even now because um, he gives us all the graces we need if only we ask him. So in the, in the general life that we live, we need God to be free of anxieties. And in our focusing on God, uh, we realize that um, he takes care of everything for us because when our attention is forced on him, he helps us to resolve other things around us, our family issues, the health issues, and everything that we have become less burdensome because um, God is helping, helping us to lift them up or to lift us up and to strengthen us when those difficult times come. So let us be free from those anxieties and let us focus on who really has taken care of them for us on the cross of Calvary, the one who has called us to come to him, all of us who are laboring and who are in, in, in anguish that he will take care of them for us. So we pray today that uh, Jesus, who hung upon the cross for our salvation and who rose again from the dead for our salvation, we continue to help us to be close to him every day. As he removed the demon from the, the unclean spirit from this man who was possessed in the synagogue today, he comes also to remove those unclean spirits from us, spirits that sometimes tell us things that, um, that, are, that, that are very negative in our lives, spirits that sometimes uh, want us to, to do harm to ourselves by indulging in things that will not help us, that God will remove them from us because he is willing to do that. We have to come to him, of course. We, he, he can't force us to do what, uh, uh, what, what, what he, he wants to do. We can force him, or he can force us to do that. We have to open ourselves and be ready to be open to that. He says to that man and the unclean spirit in him, quiet, come out of him. And so he says to us also today, because each of us in some way have something unclean in us and he wants those unclean things, spirits, uh, emotions, anger, whatever it is in our hearts, he wants to, to take them out so that he can give us a peaceful heart. And the authority he uses is the authority of his person. He who is God who came in humility to save us is also there to assist us. He didn't just speak the words alone, but he acted on it. His actions spoke louder than his words. When on the cross, he forgave those who condemned him. When he, he tried to, to reach out to other people and encourage them to be the best that they can be. So his words are speaking to us even today. These words we have heard in the, in, in the, in the scriptures today, and these words we are hearing through this homily and his word who will become flesh for us on the, on the altar of a sacrifice that will become the Eucharist, the food for us to eat and drink, to, to encourage us to be the best that we can be. So is there anything unclean, anything that you feel that is 
trying to draw you away from God at this moment, it is time for you to kind of um, open your heart and say, Jesus, come into my heart and remove this spirit that may want to uh, make me to be against myself and against my family. The spirit that may want to harm me because of the negativity that uh, that is trying to bring to me, and that and that when we give Jesus the 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 the, the, the opportunity to do that in our lives, when we open the door for Him to come in, He will certainly do it, and He will take away those spirits and help us to be the best that we can be. We pray that His grace will be sufficient for us uh, during this day and for the rest of our lives. This week we celebrate uh, the Catholic School Week and it's an opportunity to highlight the importance and the, uh, uh, of uh, Catholic education for, 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 for us. Here in our, in our parish we are privileged to have a school, a school that uh, has been educating children for the last uh, 17 or so years, helping others, children to learn about the faith and also to excel in, the, in, in their studies. A lot, of our, a lot of our children who have passed through the school have become uh, 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 good, good children of God also in their places. And many of them who, are, who have just graduated not too long ago and who are in high school are getting ready for, for college. And some of them have been admitted to Princeton uh, University and some others in the uh, University of Texas and other places. Uh, because of the academic excellence that they, they enjoy here in the school. And not only that, of course, we, we, take, we already take for granted that as a Catholic school, they will imbibe the faith and the religion of God uh, in their hearts. Every Wednesday before the pandemic, and even now, we have a mass for the, for the students. And, um, and they are striving to, to, to excel in every way that they can. You know, the, our school uh, has the, uh, is focused on, uh, on science, technology, uh, religion, uh, engineering, uh, arts, and, uh, and mathematics uh, stream, an opportunity for children to be able to grow and to be the best that they can be. Uh, today, we, we, uh, there's an open house that is virtual, uh, so you can check the bulletin for information on that. Uh, or there are flyers also in the Nortex for opportunity to learn more. Uh, even if you don't have uh, children of that age, uh, K, uh, K3 through the eighth grade, if you don't have them in your home again, maybe you know someone who do, uh, who can, who can take, take opportunity of that to be the best that they can be. Growing up as a child myself, I had an opportunity to have an elementary education in the, in the, in the Catholic school, uh, St. Gregory Catholic School, uh, just a parochial school of my, of my parish. And it was something beautiful to just, um, across the, the, the fence is the church, and on this other side is the school. And we, we, we always enjoy uh, having the priest come, come to, uh, to speak to us in the assembly. Uh, during the assembly, we all come out and be on the school field, you know, line up and listen to what God has to say to us. Uh, but not only that, of course, um, is the opportunity to grow, grow with other people who are learning also, not only the faith, but also uh, things about life. And I know very well, as even as I entered the, uni- uh, the secondary school, uh, I, I went to an Anglican school, but I was still connected to the, to the Catholic uh, girls' school because the nuns who were teaching in that school are always in the, in the church. And um, I used the opportunity to I would write some essays sometimes, you know, and pass it on to one of the sisters who was teaching uh, English language in the girls' secondary school at the time, who is, which is Catholic, and I would pass it on to her to, to help me grade it and, and mark it, you know, and it's always something beautiful. And later on, my dad taught in that school, girl school, uh, taught them mathematics, and I would go to him also. And, uh, and so I was uh, shuttling between my own school and, of course, uh, the campus of the, of the other school, the Catholic school. 
But it's something beautiful to be able to integrate our faith with our, with our whole life and learning about God and uh, learning about things of this world helps us to, to really uh, be, be holistic in our approach to life. And so we invite you to, uh, to say more, to share the, the, the joys of uh, the successes of our school uh, with, um, with those that you know, so that many more will come and find uh, uh, joy and success in it also. During this pandemic, we have uh, done everything we, we, we humanly, humanly possible to ensure the safety of our children on, on campus. And uh, we are pleased to report that um, out of all the, second, all the Catholic schools uh, in the Archdiocese, um, we, have, we, are, we are the least of those who have anything to report about positive um, um, uh, COVID among uh, students or teachers even, you know. We have only one case all through uh, this time, all this, uh, all this while, um, and, um, and that is the least in everything. And that is because of the, the way we approach safety of our children and everything that we do. So I want to say today that um, God has blessed us with this opportunity to, to really uh, um, grow our parish uh, through this ministry also of educating the young ones. And we pray that uh, God will continue to bless us. And in the same vein, I'd like to stress, of course, the, the participation and what we are doing um, with our religious education uh, on campus, with the catechism that we are giving our students and providing at this moment the confirmation classes uh, for, for the high school kids who are getting ready for confirmation. Once a week, they gather on campus to, to have their classes. Of course, there are a few of them who want to stay at home and do the same. Uh, but uh, we are doing everything we can to make sure that the faith grows, even in the midst of, uh, of this uh, pandemic. And through the grace of God and the help and the support uh, of, uh, of our parish staff and all our volunteers, we have been able to do the best we can. And thank God, all is going well. So we pray today that the Lord may strengthen each of us his faith may continue to grow in us, and we will let those anxieties of life that we have not, um, not cripple us to doing the wrong thing, but rather free us to approach God who can take care of us. And may his love continue to surround us so that together we continue to grow in his peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored Lord and glorified, and glorified who has spoken to the prophets. I, I believe in one holy, Catholic, Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess I one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, sins. and I, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We have listened to the saving word of God. Let us now turn to him, voicing our own needs and the needs of the world. That the Holy Church of God will speak a prophetic word of peace to a world torn by war and terrorism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lead the nations of this world will seek ways to alleviate poverty and in the suffering of those deprived of justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all Christians who are persecuted, especially those whose, li whose lives are in danger in the Middle East and in Asia, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who serve our parish community through its various ministries will be strengthened in their commitment to lead us closer to one another and to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those involved in our Catholic school, for teachers, students, administrators, staff, and parents, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will inherit the promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for Deacon Ola Branch and Joe Walters, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us, in the silence of our hearts, pray for other intentions. Listen to the prayers of your people, O God of mercy. Satisfy the needs of the poor and inspire in us the dedication to serve you always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for your generosity in our offering today.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to a rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when, we, when our earthly pilgrimage is ended that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Paul, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. We have some flyers regarding our Catholic school in the Nordex and also in the bulletin today. Please uh, take it home and um, try to view the virtual open house. And if you want to come for a personal visit, you can arrange with the school. The phone number is in the bulletin. On Tuesday, February the 2nd, we will celebrate the Feast of the Presentation of Our Lord. It's also known as candle mass. Um, there will be candles for those uh, blessed for, every, for those who come uh, to be able to use in their homes, reminding us that Jesus, the light of the world, has come. It's 40 days after Christmas. So please, um, if you want to join us for that mass, it will be 8.30 in the morning. And uh, the 7 p.m. mass in Spanish on that Tuesday will be for the same feast of the presentation. The annual step for students uh, will be on February the 20th, February 20, 2021. Uh, I will be running or walking around our church property on that day. Uh, we're not going to go to, to downtown for that because of COVID, yeah. you know, but I will be doing that and I will video myself a little bit so that I can show it to you all that I did walk or run, you know. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to support me, please uh, check the bulletin for information on that. Every donation given goes back to our St. Mary Magdalene Catholic School. Thank you for your support. I want to thank all our students who are in the house today, who are in the church today, the auto servers, the lectors. Um, thank you for serving on this uh, first opening of the Catholic School Week today. And uh, please, um, if you see them in the uniform and you want your children to wear the same kind of uniform, please see them after Mass and talk with them also.
We appreciate all our teachers, all our staff, and administrators of our school. We thank God for all the parents and for all our parishioners as, uh, as we are proud of the, of the existence of this school uh, that started through the vision of uh, uh, the late Monsignor Paul Procella. And we pray that um, the, the work that he started will continue. And we also pray for all those who attend other schools, uh, Catholic schools around this, the city. We ask uh, God's blessings on everyone. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord, our God, we are the light of the